Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Ashokai. My name is Ashok. In this video, we will understand what is the DevOps life cycle, what are the seven stages involved in DevOps life cycle. Alright, let's get started. What is a DevOps? DevOps is the combination of development plus operations. Currently, in the companies we are following this DevOps culture to automate application deployment process. In the project, development team will be available and operations team will be available. Development team is responsible to write the code. Operations team is responsible to build and deploy that code into server. As development team and operations team working on the project for high quality deliveries, there should be some collaboration between development team and operations team. That's where DevOps culture comes into picture. We can call DevOps is a process, DevOps is a methodology, DevOps nothing but set up of practices to simplify our application development and delivery process. Now, here in order to develop and deliver our applications to the clients, we are going to follow a life cycle. So we can call that as software development life cycle. So what is a life cycle? It is a methodology which represents from starting to ending what work that we have to do. Alright, so here we can see there are seven stages available in our DevOps life cycle. Those are seven stages we can also call as seven C's of DevOps. The seven stages we can call as seven C's of DevOps. So what are those seven stages or seven C's? The first one is continuous planning. What we want to develop and what we want to deliver we have to plan it first. Once planning is completed, then continuous development is required. Development team comes into picture, they will write the code based on the given requirement. And continuous integration is required. Multiple developers will be available in the team and those developers will be working from different different locations. All the developers code should be integrated at one place and if any changes are required we will be modifying that code and we are going to integrate that code into existing the project source code. And once integration is completed then continuous testing is required. Testing team comes into picture to test the application functionality. So what is the client requirement? What we have developed. Our development activity is working as expected by client or not. That will be tested in our application. Once the testing is completed then continuous deployment is required. So whatever the code that is developed by developers that code should be deployed into a server and that code we are going to deliver to the client. Once the deployment is completed people can access our application we need to perform continuous monitoring. So how our application is working? Are there any issues in our application? Is it working as expected or not? Continuously we should be monitoring our application. And that next one is continuous feedback. So how our application is working? How client business is running with our application? Is it working as expected by the client or not? Are there any issues in the application? Is there any change that we have to do as per the client requirement? We need to take the feedback from the client based on that we need to perform our operations continuously. If you see, in every stage C is available. That C represents continuous. That means it is a continuous activity. Continuous planning, continuous development, continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous deployment, continuous monitoring, continuous feedback. These are seven stages are called as DevOps life cycle stages. Alright, now here if you see the DevOps logo also, infinite symbol will be available. So here Dev, here Ops. So development plus operations is continuous activity in the application. I hope you understood what is DevOps life cycle. We are going to understand what are DevOps tools and what is the purpose of each tool. Let's get started. First one, Maven. Maven we will call as build tool. Maven is used to automate build process of our application like downloading the dependencies of the project, compiling the source code, executing unit test cases and packaging the project as a jar file or war file 
those tasks can be automated by using maven second one is git git we are going to use as version control software project development team will store their source code into git repository we need to take the code from the github repository to perform our devops operations git we are going to call as repository software third one we are going to use sonar cube sonar cube is used for code review when developers has done the coding we need to perform the review of that code and we need to share that code review report if any issues are there in that developers are responsible to fix those issues code review purpose we are going to use sonar cube and the next one nexus nexus we are going to use as artifactory server project build files we are going to store in the nexus repository when we compile and package our project by using maven it is going to generate a jar file or war file that jar or war we can store in the nexus repository and project shared libraries some common libraries will be available for multiple projects those shared libraries we can maintain in the nexus repository and the next one we are going to use apache tomcat apache tomcat is a web server which is used to run our java web applications every web application will run inside a server apache tomcat we can call as a web server next jenkins jenkins is called as ci cd tool which is used for continuous integration and continuous deployment whatever the build project build process we are doing code review process and build artifact code deployment whatever the operations we are doing manually by using this everything can be automated by using this jenkins Jenkins is the most important tool for every DevOps engineer. Build automation, project build and deployment automation process can be done by using Jenkins. And the next one, we are going to use Terraform. Terraform is called as infrastructure as a code. Whatever the infrastructure we need for our project, instead of creating the infrastructure, infrastructure in the sense the machines that are required the storage services that are required or the databases that are required instead of we are creating that infrastructure manually we can automate the infrastructure creation by using terraform terraform will support for almost all the cloud platforms available in the market next one is ansible ansible is called as configuration management software what is configuration management so let's assume that in our project we are having 100 machines we are using 100 machines to maintain infrastructure of our application in all the 100 machines i want to do os patching or i want to install some software in 100 machines i want to uninstall some software from 100 machines doing that operation manually is very difficult and time taking process that kind of manual work we can automate by using ansible it is called configuration management software and the next one the most important part for devops operations docker docker we are going to use as containerization platform in order to run our applications as a containers in order to manage the docker containers we are going to use kubernetes kubernetes is called as orchestration platform applications will execute as a containers those containers management like creating the containers scale up the containers scale down the containers recreate the containers that kind of management work can be done by using kubernetes along with these things we are going to use some monitoring tools also like grafana prometheus grafana prometheus are used to monitor our kubernetes cluster and the containers which are running in the cluster can be monitored by using these things and next one for application logs monitoring we are going to use elk elk is a combination of three products elastic search logstash and kibana Elastic Search is used to store the logs. Logstash will collect the logs from all the nodes in the from the cluster and will store in the El in the Elastic Search. Kibana will provide the UI to get the logs of our application. Along with these things, we are going to use Negios. Negios is used to monitor our application and application performance. What are the roles and responsibilities of DevOps engineer in the project? DevOps is a culture which is used to automate. project build and deployment process as a devops engineer we need to work with several tools to achieve our goal first one github 
GitHub is used to store the project source code. As a DevOps engineer, we need to create Git repository for the project. We need to create branches in the repository and we need to maintain that branch strategy like which branch code we need to use to deploy in the dev environment, in the city environment and in the production environment. And we need to manage user permissions also in the Git repository. For which user we need to provide which permission. For some users we will give read and write access for the repository. For some users we will give only read access. That information we will get from development team manager or development team lead. And next one, artifact server. Project to build artifacts we need to store for future reference like Nexus repository or JFrog repository we are going to use. We need to set up that artifact server and we need to create remote repository for the project to maintain shared libraries. Development team will give the shared libraries for us and we need to upload those shared libraries into Nexus repository and we need to provide the permissions for development team to access those repositories for their build process. And next one, SonarCube. SonarCube we are going to use to perform the code review. As a DevOps engineer, we need to set up quality profiles and quality gates to perform the code review for the project. And we need to check code quality and we need to send that code quality report to the development team. And next one, Terraform. Terraform we are going to use to create the infrastructure. We are going to write Terraform scripts by using HCL language. We need to execute those scripts to automate infrastructure creation in the cloud platforms. And next one, Ansible. Ansible we will use to perform configuration management. Any softwares that we need to install or update or remove in the multiple machines, instead of doing that manually, we can automate that by using Ansible. We need to set up Ansible control node and we need to configure host inventory file with the machines which we need to manage by using Ansible and we need to write the playbooks. Playbook is a YML file which contains set of tasks and we need to execute those playbooks by using Ansible control node. And next one, Jenkins. Jenkins is the heart of the CACD. CACD, continuous integration and continuous deployment. As a DevOps engineer, we need to set up the Jenkins server and we need to set up master slave architecture for the Jenkins jobs execution. We need to create the pipeline and we need to execute the pipeline and we need to monitor the pipeline. Pipelines we are going to create by using script. Some projects will use Python scripting, some projects will use Groovy scripting for the pipeline creation. As a DevOps engineer, we need to take care of those pipelines to automate build and deployment process. And sometimes we will get the request from development team or testing team to execute the pipeline. So we need to take care of those requests and we need to handle those pipelines. And next one, Docker. Docker we are going to use as a containerization platform to build and ship our applications easily into any environment. We need to set up the Docker environment. We need to write the Docker files which are required for the project. And we need to create Docker images and we need to store the Docker images into Docker registry. We need to take care of the Docker registry setup as well. Then next we'll go for Kubernetes. Kubernetes we will use as an orchestration platform. We need to set up the Kubernetes cluster. In some projects they will use Kubernetes EKS cluster or Kubernetes AKS cluster based on the cloud provider clusters. Some companies will prefer self-managed cluster by using Kubadium. Based on our project requirement, we need to set up that cluster to deploy our applications by using Kubernetes. We need to write the Kubernetes manifest files to deploy the applications and we need to write the Kubernetes service manifest files to expose our applications for accessing purpose. And we need to manage the pods and we need to manage the containers as well. And we need to monitor the cluster, we need to monitor the application. And the most important thing is we need to deploy our application to the production environment. For that we will follow blue-green deployment with a zero downtime. And we need to monitor the applications by using monitoring tools like Prometheus, Grafana. And we need to set up ELK stack to monitor logs of the application. And as a DevOps engineer, we need to participate in the release calls when the application is delivering to the production environment. We need to take care of that release process. We need to explain the development team and testing team how the release process is going to happen and what is the checklist of our release process. So based on the checklist, we will deploy the application into production environment and we will release the application for 
live traffic access all right i hope you understood what are the roles and responsibilities of devops engineers in the project thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel